Hello. <clears throat> Hello, watercolor students. There's a lot to cover with this medium. It's considered the most challenging medium in the world because not only do you have to learn how to control it, you have to learn how to let it go. It's the most ethereal, beautiful, always transparent, never permanent, most portable, easiest on you in terms of cleaning. There's no cleaning, it's just water, basically. And it's the opposite of all other kinds of paint. It's all about the water, not about the pigment. Which is why when we set up the palette, the paint you put out on day one is it for the entire semester. Those little tubes. You never dip into those wells. You never mix in those wells. You pull out a tiny bit of pigment from the wells. I shouldn't say dip into them. You kind of do, but just a little corner of a brush. Um, everything happens in the mixing area and in the extra mixing area in the lid. You always put the paint into a pool of water, never the other way around. Um, you never get big pools of water in the sides. If it happens, blot them out. If the, if the wells get dirty, clean them up. But the goal is to have discipline with your palette and to not have to keep using those tubes. You'll probably use up your entire two tubes of yellow um, on day one, which I'm going to go over, or we already went over. I'll put it in that order. Um, once you have your palette set up, with your 12 hues plus black plus the mud mixture. We're gonna be filling in the wheel and the scales and even wash practice. I made a small version only because it won't fit to show. What you're gonna be working with is this larger wheel and that was all measured out on half of a 15 by 20 paper. And the other half is gonna be your scales, much larger. But the process is the same, and I wanted to show you the technique. Imagine everything larger for you, so your brushes should be larger. The brush should always fill the size of the space. So the width of a color wheel circle, you want to use the biggest brush you can for that particular width. Also, if you're doing a scale, this one's the step-by-step. Same thing, you want to use a brush that is as large as possible. At first, a lot of people aren't comfortable with that, so you can go to this size. But the biggest problem, there's a lot of problems. A lot of mistakes people make with watercolor. Bad habits that in a beginning class, these are the habits you want to break. This is a big problem. People reach for a small brush and try to fill little by little in an area. That causes streaks, that causes puddles, that causes all kinds of problems because the bottom line is watercolor is about timing and you have to train your hand, your arm, the distance from your brush to the water to the palette so that you can work fast, fast, fast because you have very little time to get what we call an even wash or a wet and wet. Even wash is the hardest. It's something we're gonna build upon after the first project. Even wash is when you see someone who's skilled the way they fill the sky quickly or the way they have a shift in the sky from color to color or value to value. Um, that's huge mistake. Using a brush that's too small, you get streaks, you get marks. It's just a bad scene. Another problem people make, and this is huge, they use too much pigment. They oversaturate. This is particularly a problem when you're used to pastel or acrylic, where you're used to these big bold statements. This is not a bold medium. This is a delicate, soft medium. We will build up to bold in a sense later, but it's a build up underpainting, layers of drawing, coming to, going back. It's also a, a medium that takes eight or nine paintings to get a tenth great one. It's a spontaneity that you can't force. There's going to be a lot of things thrown away. Actually, it's better to save them so you can see your progress. 
but this project generally is a really horrific result. Uh, we laugh usually at the end of the semester at how bad these are. So don't feel bad if they come out weird. This is the first attempt at even wash at controlling saturation. And one of the other biggest problems is, is controlling even saturation. Even if we mix those colors perfectly in the palette, if you have a red violet that's a low saturation, means more water, and then you go up in saturation, the whole wheel goes like this. It's uneven, it's crooked, sometimes you're going to get puddles, sometimes you're going to get weird edges, sometimes you're going to get outside the edges, sometimes your, your even wash shapes are going to be too dark. All of the things that could go wrong in here, this is practice. Every project we do, you have an opportunity to redo before we do any kind of midterm grades or final grades or each project graded. If you don't do well in a project, you can take it home, do another one, bring them both in so we can compare how you grew from one to the other. It's a lot of repetition, it's a lot of trial and error, and it's a skill building that I find very delightful to see student work at the end and how the growth is so tangible. Um, I wanted to show you some techniques. On the warm-up I showed you how to do the wheel. We measured it all out and then the scales. This isn't exactly how you had it. But anywhere you have space you're gonna draw just random shapes. Some off the edge, some not. Some narrow, some wide, some very basic. And that way we can practice using different brushes for different types of shapes. Maybe have one that has a long, narrow one, so we can explore the round brushes. Round brushes are almost never used. These things are not important really, except for lines and very narrow things like that. Now remember, I'm working miniature, so every brush that I use for something like that you would be using this for something like that. The ones that go off the edge are way easier because you can push the puddle off. There's so much with watercolor, so I, I'm just going to try not to be too long-winded in these videos, but here and there kind of throw in tidbits as I would in class. Um, okay, so we know now that the brushes need to fit the space. We know now that these saturations have to be the same all the way around. We know that timing is everything. And over in here, we're gonna do a scale from color to blank paper, color to blank paper, and then color to another color, color to another color. They should look gentle like this. If your saturations are darker than this anywhere in here, it's a problem, such as this one, which I crossed out. It was kinda too dark, enough too dark for me to go no, 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 no. Um, so from the wheel, these are all our primaries, secondaries, tertiaries, and the mud mixture. Um, we will have already labeled the palette with the colors and what they're called. And we would have already mixed them to get them perfect in terms of stair steps of value. I'm sure I'm missing something, but let's go ahead and start here. This whole paper should basically feel similar in saturation. When you're using a plain even wash without blending, you don't wet the paper first. When you're doing scales like this, blended and not step by step, you do a slight damp. And it's hit and miss. Like when I did it by myself, it came out perfect, but now that I'm gonna do one for you, it's probably gonna be weird, but that's just how it is with watercolors. So another thing too is every brush is a sponge. Every brush holds a different amount of water. The bigger the brush, the better your success at getting an even wash, if it's a good brush. These are not good brushes, but you can see the sizes is what really, ultimately that's what you want. One of my uh, required brush sets, very inexpensive on your list, gets to that size but really good wide wash brushes like that can run in $30 each. And you can tell when you use them, they're just soft and so perfect. But this is good warm-ups building up. All right, so we're gonna dampen this. Now remember, I'm using a much smaller brush because 
I'm using a tiny, tiny piece of paper to fit into the camera. I'm going to dampen this. I'm not putting a giant puddle on it. I don't want big blobs of water, but just enough to give me a little extra time. This one I'm going to do color to color, so you want two brushes similar in size. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can just use one. Let me do, I'll do a red violet. Well, it's more like a red. It's like a reddish red violet. And I want to do this so that the brush is spongy enough. There's a little fleck of something in there. Whenever you get a fleck of something, push against the grain, and you'll be able to clean it quickly. But see, I have a certain timetable. So when I get here, I go slow. But when I reach for the palette and the water, I go really fast. Because I want to nuance this into plain water. On these, I'm going to just keep it all the way blank. But on this one, I'm using a different brush. And it doesn't matter what color. I'll just do a yellow green. And same saturation on both sides. That's a little bit darker, so while I can, I'm going to again use my brush as a sponge. You never want to like clean up your puddles with paper towel. There's a there's an exception. Later on I'll show you and it has to be a bounty towel or something equivalent where it doesn't work very well. So now I'm going to pull it into my other color and I want them to blend a little in the middle. But again, the minute it starts to get dry or, or scratchy, you got to stop. That's another thing with watercolor. If you try to overwork something, it's a little darker than that. Not too pleased with that, but I don't want to overdo. If you go back in, like say, okay, there's something a little off here. If I try to go in and fix it later, I can tell you right now it's a disaster. Just stop. Count your losses, get out of there, and do it again somewhere else. That's, that's really a great rule of thumb. Now I'm gonna do color into just paper. This is called an angled brush, by the way. Very similar to a flat one. It's good at getting into certain areas, but it's not required. It's not on my list. There's so many kinds of brushes as you have, when you move forward in your career, you start to collect all kinds of different tools. But flats is a good intro, flats and rounds. I'm going to do a yellow orange. Yellow orange and yellow green, as you know, are the worst in terms of mixing. No one ever mixes them with enough yellow. This is a little pink because my brush wasn't that clean, but still you get the idea. So I'm going to go into white. And see how the brush lifts like a sponge? That's hard, because we want to make sure we're not lifting too much, but we want to lift enough. So a big part of this is figuring out, getting to know the brushes. Every brush is different. The brushes we share in the classroom are amazing, and I'm bummed that we can't. I have some beautiful ones in there that hold a ton of water. Um, but again, we're, we're doing what we can do, and it's going to be awesome anyway. So that's that. If it goes wrong, just do another one. If it goes wrong, get another piece of paper. So that's going to be any colors you want mixed together. And then all of these um, shapes you made are opportunities to practice. Any color you want, again, just try not to get too saturated, always. And what's cool is if you have the right size brush, you can be doing this in the wheel at the same time. Like, let's say this brush actually were the right size, but it's not, it's too big. I mean, it's too small of a brush for this. But if I had just done a shape that had, I'm just using the paint I just had, if I'm doing this and then I realize one of these is blue, well, that's red violet, so I have to do blue here. And again, you don't wet these over here, this and none of the shapes. This is even wash. But see how I do it fast? And I let the brush gently, without barely touching, pick up the puddle. Now, if I get all in here, like, annoyed and, like, trying to fix it, then I have these problems. I can't. I want to. It's our nature to want to fix that. 
but I know if I try to, I'm in trouble. And blotting it will not work. It'll create a texture. That's for another thing altogether. Oh, I just wanna go in there and fix that. But I can't. I just can't. If I do, it's gonna get worse. So move on. I can always do another wheel and make it perfect. Take several tries. Now this one I'm gonna do blue also, but look how it goes off. Now if you get this dark, you can go lighter. You just don't wanna get darker than that. That's way dark, but this works. This is about as dark as you can get. But you wanna keep generally close in saturation around. Now when you start using the corner of the brush, it means you're starting to get familiar with the brush, but mostly it's best to switch brushes in the middle so that you don't try to do the whole thing because if you do, you won't stay in the lines. And the goal of these is to stay in the lines. That's why we draw them first. See how there's a puddle there? I'm lucky because I can pull this off or let this be a sponge. I just dried it on a paper towel so that it can act as a sponge or pull it off. This is gorgeous. I'm very, I missed one. I don't want to mess it up, but I missed, okay, wait. That's perfect. I'm totally into this. Wait, this, this is what I want you to do is start really becoming perfectionistic and getting right on those lines without a puddle and without backgrounds and without too much saturation. It's a whole deal. Let me do blue violet. You can see how I almost use no paint at all. I mean, like, no paint at all. This palette can get dried out, upside down, carried around, traveled with, and it's still usable. Paint never dry, the paint never goes bad. Sometimes the lid is stuck on it. You take a scissor, cut it open. I've, I'm still using paints that someone donated from the 70s that are in the classroom. We just cut them open. So again, paint is barely used in this medium. Now in here, this is so small. This is almost too big, but it's actually perfect because the idea is to spin around the circle. And again, I'm getting from, see the puddle? Now in that moment, I can dry the brush slightly and barely touch down to remove the puddle. Something else we don't want to do here is to create a line around the edge, which is a natural thing that happens with watercolor. It settles and then you get this actually gorgeous lost and found line around the edge. But in this case, we don't want that to happen because even wash is not designed to be manipulated to have that edge. In fact, it's an edge that happens on its own. If you place this down and you realize that it's the wrong saturation, it's because you don't have a test sheet. Every single project, see I used too small of a brush. This brush is better for this. It's harder to do with a smaller brush. It's, see, not as good. I should have done that with this brush, I think. Well, see, that was bad. I don't like that at all. I'm not gonna try to fix it though, problem. Um, always have a test sheet always you have a little sliver of watercolor paper test your brush first see if it's the correct saturation otherwise you're just taking a gamble on this thing you got to know what's going to hit the paper all right so again you use it in the well now this is a good brush for this and i'm going to go fast i'm going to literally stand up and do a circle like I'm driving around and then boom. Now I went outside the line, but look how gorgeous that is. That's better than any of these because I did it quickly. So that's what I want you to do is go fast. And if you can move your whole body as you spin, it makes it a lot easier. Spin, bend, hard edge painting, swing it around and allow the brush to gently pick up the puddle. Now that didn't work right here, but 
I did it fast enough so that I, oh, well, a little bit of an it, but you know what? If I blot it or try to, you know what I mean, just let it go. So just continue with this. You're going to do the rest of the, you've got your primaries. You're going to have your orange, green, and purple. And in the middle, you're going to have your mud mixture, which remember is the brown we mixed in the corner that should be completely neutral. And that goes in here. If it looks too red, add some green. But I think we mixed it well, so that should be good. So two of these are going to be color to blank, color to blank. With these, you very gently dampen the paper, not big blobs of water. Um, if it gets too blobby, you can get the water off with a paper towel before you start, but not too much water off either. And then color to color, color to color, and then practicing these shapes using different brushes along the way. This shape for me is the only one that I would use this tiny round brush for just because I couldn't possibly get in there otherwise. But what you'll do is only use it where you need it and then switch to a brush that's more appropriate for the width of it because you don't want to have that bad habit of and this happens in every painting class. People get a brush in their hand and that's that's the end of it. They use the same brush over and over and over. And we want to get used to grabbing this brush, grabbing that brush, quickly grabbing that. It's a speed. You want everything nearby. All right, so that is the first project. Cool. And do it as many times as you need.